My name is Gypsy Rose Leapett. I'm 21 years old and I'm from Perth, Western Australia. I'm currently studying a double degree in law and criminology. However, acting has always been my true passion and so I've decided to finally follow that dream. I've been performing since I was seven years old and have had the opportunity to take on both minor and major roles with a performance every single year throughout my schooling. Some of the plays, for example, that I've performed in, The Canterbury Tales, Macbeth, Arabian Nights, The Crucible, and my proudest performance was as Miss Havisham in Great Expectations for our Year 12 production. For me, acting is a form of, of storytelling, <laughs> but it's also so much more than that. It's not just about depicting a story to an audience, it's about transporting the audience into the story to make that story a reality for them, to make the characters real on stage and bring them into that experience. It's made me very empathetic as a person by being able to take on a variety of characters and learn to see things and do things from all different perspectives. And I believe that it can do the same for audiences. It's a great form of education in that sense. I come alive when I'm on stage. I feel energy throughout my whole body and I've never felt that before with anything else. And I, I truly love it. And I would love the opportunity to experience that more and to grow and learn as an actor. And I feel that the American Academy of Dramatic Arts is the best place for me to do that. I have two monologues today. Uh, my first monologue is from A Girl's Guide to Chaos and it's Cynthia's monologue. <clears throat> the realisation hits me heavily, like a 44 magnet smashing into my skull. My heart starts beating with a quick dread and my blood freezes in my veins. My stomach to fat flutes. The ordeal that I am about to face is one of the most chilling, grisly and macabre experiences known to woman. Dating. I will have to start dating again. <laughs> Please, God, no. <laughs> Don't make me do it. I'll be good from now on, I promise. I'll stop feeding the dog hashish. I'll be kind and thoughtful, sober, industrious, anything. But please, God, not the ultimate torture of dating. That's why I stayed with him for so long, probably. I couldn't stand going through it all again. Sure. He may be a trifle wild and intractable, I kept telling myself, but at least I know I'll get late tonight and tomorrow night. At least someone will go to the movies with me and not try to hold my hand. Hand holding. The worst thing about dating. It's the most nerve-wracking experience. Once I start holding hands, I'm afraid to stop. If I pull my hand away, will he think I'm being cold or moody? Should I squeeze his hand and wiggle my fingers around suggestively, or is that too forward? And what if my hand is clammy? A clammy hand is more offensive than bad breath or, or right-wing politics. A clammy hand means that you're a lousy lay. Everybody knows that. And what despiteful God will I wear? Mm -hmm. Okay, my second monologue is from Sam Shepard's Full for Love, and it's Kristen Bartlett's monologue, Beautiful. <clears throat> So tell me, do you hate me? Do you not want to be my friend? 
I never asked you for any of that. In fact, all I did was love you. And I really wouldn't say that's a crime unless, of course, you would. It was always about you. You know that. Always. And I, I can't for the love of God decide whether I want you or who you are. Although I do know that whatever I wanted, I wanted it with a passion. Do you not love me because I'm ugly? Is that it? Because I know that I am. God just didn't give me beauty and for one thing I don't care. I can't help not having innocent eyes and a perfect figure just as you can't help being the asshole that you are. You hurt my feelings today. And I'm fairly sure that you didn't even realise it. Just something that you said on impulse that was forgotten about a second later. But when I got in the car to go home, I still hadn't forgotten it. It's the way that you are. I never gave a damn about what anyone thought about me. And then you go around changing that. It's like... Well, let me just say that I am looking forward to the day you leave. And I can't wait for the rest of my life where I never have to see you or hear your voice. Because I'm going to be something. And now you see me and you think I'm no special person. You you see me and make your judgments, your decisions, but it won't always be that way. Because tomorrow you'll see that I may not be pretty, but I will be beautiful. Beautiful.